Okay. Hello everyone. So a little disclaimer, I'm not a YouTuber. I don't really do videos like this, so not really sure of what introduction to give you, but here we go. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Shannon, I'm a singer-songwriter and this is my 2020 wrapped video. Do I have to work it out for a lot of things have happened this year and um, it's been an interesting year to choose to start a music career, I will say that. We're gonna look back at how I released my debut single, how I got to sing with the Marisha Wallace. I say sing with, I sang for her and then she reacted in live time to me singing. And also how I just started to take steps into the industry that is the music industry, all during a global pandemic. It's come with its challenges, of course, but overall it's been a really good year. So I actually managed to kickstart my music career in the year of 2020, the global pandemic, and I actually managed to release some official music. Here's how I did it. So before the start of COVID-19, I had the absolute pleasure of playing a few gigs on the London circuit. I played at places such as Upstairs at Ronnie Scott's through Ruby Sings and Jams, which was a really good night where singer-songwriters and artists can showcase their talent at the beginning of the evening and then the stage opens up to be a sort of open mic live night jam sort of thing with live musicians anyone can come and sing and play it's super super fun i also played at box park in shoreditch at the record shop um bit of the area which was really really nice i also played spice of life in soho which was hosted by chic and jam which is pretty much empowering women musicians to go to live music jams um, and showcase their talent as well, which is super, super cool. I played at the Moustache Bar in Dalston in Hackney. So those were a few little places that I played um, before COVID-19 hit us all dramatically so. So, January. It was a pretty quiet month for me. Um, I'd finished doing a headline gig at the Moustache Bar in Dalston, so I had a few weeks to prepare for my next gig coming up at the Lucky Pig Cocktail Bar in um, Fitzrovia at Central London. So I was preparing my set lists and writing some songs for my next gig. Um, and also, um, not much was going on, so I decided to set up my own music tuition business and started teaching singing and guitar. Um, then February rolled about and I played my headline show at the Lucky Pig and it was really, really cool. Um, I met an amazing singer-songwriter there called Sephiria from that night that we first met. Um, we started collaborating together, decided to get together in the future to do some practicing stuff in the studio and eventually write songs together. Um, I was in touch with a producer friend of mine who is an Italian guitarist and songwriter and he'd written a really cool Daft Punk inspired beat that was quite um, a mix of genres. So it had electric guitar riffs and licks in there, paired with an EDM sort of style beat, if that makes sense. So it was a mix of genres and it was just lacking vocals. So he had asked me if I'd like to write some vocals over it and record it. And I listened to the track and I thought, this is really good. I'm gonna write some killer riffs over this. Um, so we got together in an East London studio and started writing, recording, mixing, producing the song together. So Shannon, what are we going to do today? Yeah. What are we going to do? We're going to record some vocals. And it's going to be? Wicked. <laughs> That's great. Um, and this is my friend Mark McCauley. And um, yeah, so we recorded a track together that we definitely wanted to release so i had to start getting a spotify profile ready which i had no idea how to do um, because i'd never released anything before it got to march and i secured a flexible part-time job at a really cool brand new music venue that was opened by 
Ben Lovett from Mumford & Sons. So he became the CEO of the company that opened this new venue in King's Cross. Um, he had already opened a music venue called Amira in London Bridge. Um, that's a really good venue for showcasing upcoming artists. Um, so I worked there, I did a bit of hosting and cloakroom and we we're basically preparing for the opening. Um, so the opening happened uh, around the beginning of March and it was really exciting because I got to work some special VIP events where there was some VIP artists playing and I got to watch them. Um, so we had Dave come in the first week of the Apple Music event and he did a set and he was incredible. I remember watching him at the Brit Awards on my TV and I didn't think I'd be able to see him in the flesh at my place of work. So I worked there for about a month and then lockdown was announced for the first time and live music venues obviously had to shut and they couldn't continue. That put a lot of things on pause for me actually because I wanted to start working on my own solo music project of releasing my own songs because I had written a lot of songs myself but I needed to get them produced. I found a producer that actually really wanted to work with me. We met up before lockdown was announced um, and she had her own studio where I could record um, and she was really um, helpful with giving me advice about what I could do with my music and where I could take it in terms of producing. It didn't happen the way I wanted it to, um, the normal way where we would go to a studio and, and record um, because of all these new restrictions that were put in place. And I was super sad because my gig that I was going to play with Sephiria was cancelled um, and there was a lot of gigs that I could have done in the future that again never happened. So it really reduced my way of getting myself out there and promoting myself through gigs. So I had to really find a way, well, essentially another way to promote myself via online and building up an online following and presence. I wanted to knuckle down and get serious with it. Um, I wanted to really make myself into my own brand um, so people could e know exactly what they were looking out for when they were supporting me and just seeing me as an artist. So I had to really think about a lot of extra marketing ideas and things that I would have never thought to do before because I kind of just relied on gigs and just posting videos and not really. So I had to do a lot of things for myself and I also learnt a few new skill sets over the first lockdown. So I knew I couldn't meet up with my producer anymore and um, I don't. I think she moved out of London. And also my collaboration partner on the first track um, I was doing um, had moved back to Italy to see his family. So that was put on pause as well for a while and I knew I didn't really have anything to show for myself in terms of releasing music yet. So I thought, you know what? I'm gonna invest in buying recording equipment for myself so I can build a little home studio in my own home. Um, so I did, I had no idea what I was doing. I had to do a bit of research into what I could buy and obviously take into account what I could afford. Luckily I was put on furlough pay from my music venue job but we were uncertain how long that would be for. So I didn't know where my money would be coming from and how long. Um, I moved my teaching online but it, I got less and less clients from that um, so I had to work on promoting that business as well as my own music and um, it got a bit much sometimes but at least I had the time to do it because I wasn't working anymore I was out of a job um, and I started recording stuff and then sending it over to my producer who I was working with before lockdown and we agreed to work remotely on my debut single so we would still continue to build it up I was sending her recordings she was sending me back some and we were building up the track that way and we had lots and lots of phone calls um, we were both on the same page for the entire project so it was really really nice to work with her. I'm going to skip ahead a couple of months because the months between March and May was basically me trying to figure out how the hell to record anything. <laughs> we adapt and overcome and um, so skipping a few months ahead to May 
we finally released um, the collaboration track between myself and Mark and um, I really enjoyed what they produced. Um, I really enjoyed the production. So skipping ahead a few months, my social media accounts were set up. I had a, finally a solidified Spotify profile that was recognised as me. Um, and finally, better off this way, my first ever um, feature on a collaboration track was released. And we had so much fun making the promo video for it as well. You can find that here on my YouTube channel. Um, we filmed it internationally. So whilst he was at home in Italy and I was at home here, um, we made a little promotion video for it. Then July came along and finally my debut single was ready to be released. So that came out and it got a really good response um, and I was super, super excited about it being released and um, how people would find it. Because I was the only one that I had heard it until I released it. So I was really eager to hear people's opinions. Um, and then I quickly learned how difficult it actually was to promote music yourself without having a team or anyone behind you or having much money to actually throw into it. So um, I had to be really careful and I spent a lot of time day and night submitting my songs to radio stations, Spotify playlists and online blogs to get reviews just so my debut single could have a buzz made about it. You really adopt a full-time job in music but you don't actually get paid for it. So you put in hours and hours but you know you don't receive money from it straight away. You have to just invest and invest and just hope that it works out. I did come across quite a few rejections upon submitting my first song for different reviews etc. But um, after submitting my song to everywhere, basically every single day, I finally found some success when BBC Radio Essex phoned me up and said they wanted to play my track on their radio station. And I, of course, said, yes, please. <laughs> and I was offered a radio interview live with the influencer Helen Scott, who at the time was running Evenings on BBC Essex. And um, it was very nerve wracking and exciting because I was having a live interview with her over the phone. I didn't know what she was going to ask me. Um, so it was a pretty scary time but after it happened I was so glad that it did because um, what a way to get yourself out there on BBC Radio it's just such an established thing so I was very pleased with that achievement and so early on in my career where I've literally just started out I recorded my debut single in lockdown in my bedroom and it managed to end up on BBC Radio so I was very very pleased with that um, and I also ended up featuring on my local radio station, H Spark Radio, which I will link. I'm going to link actually all of the creatives and um, venues that I've mentioned in the description box just underneath the video. So you can um, click on them and just go and show them support if you're interested in any of them as well. So yes, I featured on HBuck Radio and also Chelmsford Community Radio as well, where I had an interview there. So then we get to September. Um, so it rolled around quite quickly and I knew that furlough from my old job wasn't going to last forever. So finally, after looking for, I'd say the whole summer for a job that would give me a steady income um, and just something to fall back on. I finally started working full time at a university in accommodation. Um, however, it did mean that I lost a lot of time that I could have been working on my music. But it's the sacrifice you have to make sometimes. You know, you need money, but you also need time. Sometimes you can't have them both. So I'd work my nine to five job and then 
I'd literally get home about 8 p.m. and then start teaching online because I obviously transferred my lessons online. I kept them going. I had a few clients I was teaching every week. Compared to working 24 seven on my music to just evenings and weekends, it was a massive difference. Um, and I had to get used to the change of lifestyle as well because I'd gone from just sitting on my sofa during lockdown for about five months to working a full-time job. I carried on um, working on my music and then I thought, I need a music video for Worth It. I really, really wanted to do one. Um, and it got to around October time and I, I didn't really want to go outside of my local area and do the video with someone I didn't know. Because of restrictions and everything like that, I wanted to keep it local and do it with a close friend. So I wanted to keep it local and luckily I had a close friend that was actually looking into starting their own video production business. So I became their first client. Um, and we worked together over a weekend in a location in my local area and we got the music video filmed and it came out the end of November. But going back to October, um, I actually managed to get cast in a musical theatre cabaret uh, because I actually trained in musical theatre. I studied musical theatre performance um, as a degree in 2019. I graduated. So um, I had about five years of experience in musical theatre because I did it in college as well before that. So there was a socially distanced cabaret event that I got cast in as a vocalist and I managed to sing a musical theatre song um, sort of a ballad type of song that was um, in front of about I say around 50 people that were socially distanced sitting on tables and their social bubbles etc and it was super nice to be performing live again because it had been ages since I'd done a live performance and just to have that natural audience reaction and applause after you finish something was just so nice to feel again. And show everyone a little respect Time after time I find that I'm struggling To tell you what's burning inside A glimmer of hope that you'll finally see so that happened and then moving to no back to November so the Worth It music video came out and um, I also got invited to perform a live stream performance through the Portsmouth Guildhall Facebook page which was great because it had a lot of people tuning in to that Facebook page anyway. Um, and I got my fans and friends and family to tune in as well. So it was a very well received live stream um, with lots of people in the comments like telling me what they thought and it was really exciting for me to just perform live again. But this time it was from my bedroom so I must admit it was very weird just performing to my phone camera um, and getting little comments pop up because I wasn't really used to doing that many live streams. So after the live stream happened, we quickly moved to December and I thought, you know, my life can't really get any better at this point because a lot of things have happened to me that have made me feel really grateful, especially to have happened during this year. And um, I'm sitting on my bed um, one afternoon and I'm about to teach a lesson but I have 20 minutes to go so I'm just flicking through my Instagram on my phone and I see Marisha Wallace's live Instagram video pop up 
so I click on it. I've seen a few of them before. She basically does weekly live streams where she invites people to sing on her live stream. So um, she picks them completely at random, I think. I think, and I thought, mm, let's give it a go. Let's just see what happens if I type in this song suggestion and she actually picked me um, to sing on her live Instagram. So I was very taken aback and I just see the notification come up on my phone. Marisha Wallace wants you to be in the live video. And I'm just like, huh? <laughs> Are you serious? I couldn't believe it. Um, so obviously I clicked yes. Um, and I had the backing track up and ready for um, Stevie Wonder's song Lately, which he's absolutely one of my incredible inspirations. Cause this time could mean goodbye. <laughs> the video of me singing for Marisha Wallace is on my Instagram at official Shannon UK if you wanted to tune in. It's also on one of her live videos she posted on Instagram as well. Um, so that was pretty cool and it really was the cherry on top of my year. Of my of my year? Of my cherry on top of the cake, I think is what I'm trying to say. Because a lot of things had happened that I was very happy with and couldn't foresee and then that happened and I was like okay well incredible but it doesn't stop there I've got so many things coming up um the new year is for new releases new collaborations I've been working on um and potentially a new EP that I am working on as well so I hope everyone has an incredible new year and looks forward to new things, new opportunities and I hope you can stay tuned for what I've got ready for you guys because it's going to be a great year. follow me I've put all the links below but you can follow me at official Shannon UK on Instagram Facebook at official Shan UK on Twitter um, and I also have a TikTok as well because TikTok seems to be the thing that's hitting off nowadays um, so that's the same name as well official Shannon UK and you can subscribe to my YouTube channel as well if you want more videos and keep up to date with what I'm doing but yes, I hope everyone has a great end of the year and a great start to the new year. And I'll see you guys soon.